Martin, it seems a long time since the draw against Southampton at St Mary's. How are the squad shaping up after the international break? We scrapped the day off on Wednesday because I wanted to make a good assessment so I had to come back on Wednesday, normally on, on uh, Thursday, but no. Uh, it was necessary to, uh, to, to get him here at Monster Park to make assessments and that is what we did. So uh, on Thursday the next group came in, you know, for the South American boys and uh, for example, De Jaga, who played for Iron, and uh, it's not easy because uh, we had two days, uh, and of course on the Thursday you prepare the, for the for, you prepare them for the next match, so it's almost like a recovery. But today we had a good session. Uh, it was the first time that we could work together with the 22. Uh, actually, had 24 players, but of course you can only play 22 in 11-11. So that is what we did. So it's the same as it was before, you know, you play against Southampton. You saw what we did with the set places. The first one was a corner kick, Fond to score. The second one was a set place. And uh, today we tried to work on that. But it's, a, it's late because it's a Friday before the next match. And that is a reality. It's awful for managers because we had probably three or four players left here uh, who started against Southampton. But for me, it was very positive that they come back. And we had one problem, that was Wayne Lewis. Mm. He had a little uh, injury with his groin. And the rest was, was uh, fine and uh, healthy. So uh, we've got a big squad for tomorrow, I can tell you that. And of course, the squad is getting bigger and bigger because all the injuries are coming back. We've got uh, Krieger, of course, and Simon Davis still out. But the rest is back and uh, we've got one uh, a short-term injury that is why I was and I still hope that he can be involved tomorrow. Does that therefore give you a bit of a selection headache now obviously not having much time to prepare and play together you presumably um, will be looking at bringing back some of the injured players? Of course Berbatov is fit and Berbatov is one who will start simple but it's uh, October now and we still don't know because Patrick was injured so he couldn't show what he could do with Berbatov. So I played all the Jäger with Berbatov. Uh, on the left, uh, Kaka played and went on international duty and had a good uh, uh, assessment with uh, Kieran Richardson. He came on against Southampton. He almost scored twice. Uh, he did well in, uh, in a short period. So I was happy with that. I've got Kieran Frey back now. Kieran Frey did well last year. So I've got three options on the left, for example. And uh, that is luxury position but up front for example we still have to find out uh, who can play together what the best pair is but i feel that if you see patrick for example start and he started against norwich scored two goals and, and he is already on three goals actually well Jäger works hard gives us a penetration there he's, he's stretching defenses Berbatov is holding the ball up so we've got different options but we still have to find out probably what the options are, the players are to play together. Mohamedou Diara you thought would be out for an extended period of time, but I believe he is actually available tomorrow. Our medical staff said initially he will be out for three or four weeks, but it could be longer, depends on the operation. The operation was positive and Diara is almost a, a medical miracle, you know, so he came back after three or four weeks and he said that all along. Uh, he trained hard. Of course, you would first say, you know, uh, give him uh, 90 minutes in the reserves, but the eye is different, so I involve him tomorrow. The jugger came back, uh, I thought he would play 45 minutes, they had a red card with Iran, and uh, he had to play 90 minutes with 10 men, they still had a good result, 1-0 against South Korea. So he has uh, a game under his belt, he played 45 minutes at Graven Cottage, so I will involve him as well. So. We will see tomorrow if they play or start or come on the pitch or be on the bench or whatever. Aston Villa below Fulham in the table, not getting the results away from home, but uh, is that a false position? Are Villa a better team than their position in the table indicates? It is uh, probably more uh, inconsistency like most of the other teams. If you saw them against Man City in the Carling Cup, they beat them 4-2, maybe you can remember that. They had a 1-1 draw against Newcastle away from home. It's almost, you know, nearly impossible to have a good result there. So they are capable of having results. Of course, they had a 4-1 against Southampton because they knew exactly what to do. They, they scored in the right moments, Southampton, so that was an indifferent result for them. But I feel that uh, they've got good players. If you consider that Bent is on the bench, 
Benteke, we, we were interested in Benteke as well. You know, he's he's a big talent. Scored mm. for Belgium, two goals for Belgium. Agbon Lahore is probably one of the quickest players up front in in the English league. They've got uh, Ireland. They've got Holman. I know from Holland. He's an athletic player. You know, they've got Al Mahdi. He's, he's he's good. You know, he's a good number four. So they've got quality. So. Uh, we have to use our quality, we have to try to dominate them and create chances and then hopefully with the home advantage we will be strong enough to have a result. But you know, we don't underestimate them because uh, uh, maybe Man City did that, you know, because they played a different team but they still should be good enough to have a good result against Aston Villa and they didn't, they beat them 4-2. So. Uh, as I said, uh, I feel that it is a, a team with good qualities, with uh, one of the best goal scorers in England on the bench. And I've got a sneaky feeling that he will play, probably. Well, we wish you luck tomorrow. Okay, thank you.